Hello, welcome to the keynote I gave at the San Diego 2011 conference. My name is Paul Meems from the Netherlands. I live in the northern part of the country, in Groningen. I work for Topics GeoICT and we offer support and development for MapWindow version 4. Since 2003, I've been involved in MapWindow, first with version 3, which was not yet open source as a user. Very soon after that, version 4 was released, which was open source. At that time, I started adding the ActiveX control to my custom applications and started translating the GUI and helping out on the forums. Around 2006-2007, I started building my own plugins. This is a picture of me during the keynote. Currently, I am the release and configuration manager and I try to manage a small group of core developers. I still develop a bit. I've, I've just finished the new icons and toolbars of MapWindow and I've created a specific application, ClickMart, which is a set of plugins for outdoor use by people that are digging in the ground with heavy machines. They need to know if any telephone cables, water pipes, red, electrical wires and so are in the ground. Let's start with some history about MapWindow. In 2000, the TMDL Toolkit, an early predecessor to MapWindow, is presented at the ESRI International User Conference in San Diego, California. Michael Ames, Daniel Brown and Zeke Evans are the rich contributors on the guidance from Dan and Jeff Horsberg. 2001, MapWindow 1.0 is born as a set of separate TK tools, including TK Map DLL, TK Grid DLL and others. Brian Smith joins the team and makes great progress on building standalone GIS functions requiring no propriety software. 2002, MapWindow 2.0 emerges as the first version that is divested at any of Dan's original Visual Basic 6 code. 2003, MapWindow 3 Point zero is released and includes a standalone ActiveX component, desktop application and a .NET based plugin architecture. MapWindow is used primarily for projects at ISU. The MapWindow logo and MapWindow.com sites are developed. 2004, a formal market study conducted by an external consultant finds that there is no feasible way to cut into every dominant GIS market. A subsequent negotiation between USU and the primary funding source for this project, the Idaho National Engineering and Environmental Laboratory, results in the release of MapWindow 3.0 and its source code to the public domain. Then moves to Idaho State University with just a dream and 30 MB of source code. 2005, the US EPA expresses interests in MapWindow as a platform for the next release of the Basin's Watershed Modeling System. Then adds the Mozilla public license to an updated version of the code and posted it all on the MapWindow.org website as MapWindow 4.0 Open Source GIS. 2006. After one year on the web, MapWindow hits the 10,000 download mark and gets its local press release and TV news spot. Chris Michaelis, Forrest Chan, Alan Anselmo and Angel Hillier work towards releasing of version 4.0 and 4.2 with better labeling, more file formats, projections, multiple language supports and basic printing capabilities. 2007. With the new capabilities, downloads of my window skyrockets to 6000 per month, a number that remains consistent till now. Version 4.3 is released within the help of several others. 2008. MapWindow 4.4 and 4.5 are released including a number of performance enhancements, bug fixes and stability improvements. The MapWindow team grows to over 2,000 members and the opt-in mailing list hits 9,000. Downloads break the 200,000 mark. 2009. Version 4.6 is released including updated plugins and geoprocessing capabilities. Paul Mames leads an international developer group including Rob Cranes, Sergei Lysinski, Sonia Morgan and many others to get a stable version 4.7 ready for release. This includes new printing capabilities and another full batch of stability updates. 2010. The first international MapWindow GIS conference is held in Orlando, Florida. The first release candidate of 4.8 is ready. During the summer, several students work on a map window for the Duke Google Summer of Code 
in a webinar sum of code. Especially the work of Sergey is great. His improvements made the ActiveX better, faster and more appealing. 2011, 400,000 download mark. Dan and Paula gave him presentations and workshops during the Open Water Symposium in Delft, the Netherlands. The second MapWindow.js conference, now called International MapWindow.js and .spatial conference, is held in June in San Diego, California. The stable version of 4.8 will be ready after the summer and work will start on for version 4.9, 2012. New version of MapWindow 4.9 will be released. This version will create a new GUI around the ActiveX control and will use as much as possible the libraries from that spatial. The current state of MapWindow. The development of MapWindow 4 will continue. We will try to reuse as much as possible from the .spatial library, but the main focus will be on improving the ActiveX. We now have a very skilled C++ developer called Sergey in our team and improving the user experience. With MapWindow 4, we will try to mimic RTS as much as possible. Just two months ago, Chris George has updated the automatic water delineation plugin and it will now use the new and highly improved version 5 of the Taudum library. Chris will tell you more about this in another presentation. Sergey has just finished his symbology enhancements. The main part of my presentation will be about new symbology. The future of MapWindow. As said before, MapWindow is still being developed. We even have a wish list for version 4.9. I'll tell you more about it later. We also need to improve our documentation. I can't promise it will be all up and running before we release a stable version of 4.8, but we are working on it. We also need to work getting more people involved. As said, we have over 10,000 people on our announcement list. Most of them are users. Several companies and more and more government agencies worldwide are using WebWindow 4. Somehow we need to let them help with the documentations, the forum, testing and development. Let me know if you have any suggestions how to get more people involved. The modified GUI. We've been updating the main GUI of the map window a bit. First changed the loading sequence of the components and added the splash screen. This resulted in shorter loading time and a better experience for the user. It knows it has to wait a few seconds. We're also working on some new icons made by a professional designer to give MapWindow a more uniform look. The tool buttons are also larger and by default they have a label. The label can be switched off. The main toolbar has also been split in more smaller ones, making it easier to move them around and toggle the text labels. For example, I like the zoom buttons to be on the right without labels. Image processing. Sergey impl implemented several image enhancements in the ActiveX control. Most of them are triggered while I was creating the ClickMart applications and those are funded by Topics GeoRCT. Images are processed by the GDAL library and most of the enhancements were already available in GDAL. They needed only to be implemented in the OCX. Image overviews. When you have a TIFF file of a large area and you zoom to full extent, you see less detail than when you zoom in. But without overviews, the same amount of data is being processed, making large images respond slowly. If you create an overview, a new file will be created that holds several images with different details. The result is that on full extent, the image with the least detail will be used, and when zoomed in very much, the image with the highest detail will be used. This makes zooming and panning of these large image files much faster. Bilinear and bicubical sampling methods. MapWindow used to interpolate all images as nearest neighbor. These are the easiest and fastest technique. If you have an image with only a few no data values, it works best. But when you have an image with a lot of no data values, you end up with a stipled line. For our ClickMart application, we have a lot of images with only a few lines, so this technique made the image worthless. So we ask Sergey to implement the bicubic and bilinear methods. Bilinear. This method looks at the four pixels surrounding the non-integer point of interest and forms a continuous bilinear plane. It then samples the plane at the non-integer point and uses this as a value. This method is a compromise between bicubic and nearest neighbor. It still generates data not found on the original image, but not to the extent as bicubic, and it is also faster. Bicubic. This method looks at the 16 pixels surrounding the non-integer point of interest and forms a continuous bicubic surface. 
It then samples this surface at a non-integer point and uses this as a value. This method does the most processing and general looks the best, but it also deviates the most from the original image data. Satya implemented several other image processing methods, get unique colors and set no data value. Sometimes it is useful to know the colors that are used in the image. We needed this again in our ClickMath application because we were, were giving data that had no correct transparency set. Because we knew the data we're getting is mostly transparent, we can use get unique colors to get the most common color and use set no data value to set that color to transparent. Two transparency colors. It is now also possible to set two transparency colors. All color file values between those two values will be set to transparent. So if you set white and black, you see no image at all. This is very useful while working with images where there are high contrast between various parts. For example, dark water and a relatively light rain. While setting range of transparency colors, presumably it's possible to show only the necessary parts, either water or terrain. Utils merge image and image can use grouping. Also for our ClickMart applications, we funded these two enhancements. As mentioned before, we have a lot of images in high res resolution, 3500 to 3200 pixels, with only a few lines on it. Loading each image takes a lot of memory, about 10 megabytes. When the property can use grouping is set to true, the images with the same bounding box are first merged in memory before sending to the screen. This means opening 10 of these images doesn't take 100 megabytes of RAM, but just 10 megabytes plus a little overhead. This is a great speed improvement. It is also possible to merge images permanently by using Util's Merge Image. This creates a new image file on disk. Symbology. The symbology creates a new user experience. I'll tell more about the new layer property forms later. With the theme colors, it is much easier to create good looking maps. You've got several fill styles for gradients, textures and hatching. With categories you can give color to each shape depending on attribute data value. You can also create your own color scheme. Most of the color schemes suggested by Color Brewer are available. Labels. It's now very easy to create nice looking labels. You can have labels with a background, you can create an expression. For the labels you can change the font, you can change the frame, you can change the position and the visibility. We've got now charge. You can choose between pie charts and bar charts. You select several fields, the size of the field and to which the data needs to be normalized. Then you create size and style how the values need to be printed in the position of the chart. With the visibility expression you can say, for instance, that you only want to see the charts, in this case states, with, with a high uh, male population. And you end up with this image where the states with a low male population uh, don't have any charts. There's a mode tab in the Symbology Manager. You can set several options. Fast drawing. Load shape data in the memory for faster drawing. Speed optimization for large shape files. Large means more than 800,000 shapes, around 200 megabytes. The option minimal shape size will also improve the performance. Editing mode. Starts or stops the editing session for the shape file. The changes can be saved or discarded while closing. Spatial Index creates R3 for faster search, affecting drawing and selection at close scales. GDI and GDI Plus mode for labels. Labels can be drawn in both GDI and GDI Plus mode. The drawing speed and font appearances can be somewhat different. With the new labels comes also a new label mover. With this label mover it is possible to move certain labels and charts. For instance if they overlap. It's a bit hard to see, but if you look at the left, the state of Wisconsin over here isn't labeled because collision avoidance is uh, enabled. In this image, I've moved the labels around Wisconsin a little bit and now the label for Wisconsin is shown.